Good morning children. Today we shall learn about the leaves, its functions and the modifications. If you look around, you would find many kinds of leaves. Some leaves are small, for example the acacia leaves and some leaves are big, for example the banana leaf. Not just the size, even the shapes are different, like the long and thin leaf in the grass, needle-like shape in the pine, circular shape in the water lily, etc. Some leaves have smooth edges like in the banana and others such as in the oak have jagged edges. So there are many varieties of leaves but the basic structure of all the leaves is the same. A leaf rises from the node of the stem. The part of the leaf which is attached to the stem is the petiole. Each leaf has a broad flat surface which is generally green in color. It is called the leaf blade or the lamina. Look carefully, you would find patterns of line on the lamina. These lines on the lamina of the leaf are called the veins. Observe carefully, there is a thickest vein in the middle of the leaf. It is called the midrib. The veins act as a pipeline which carries the water, minerals and the food up and down the leaf. You know, one can tell what kind of a root a plant has by just looking at the leaf. Surprised? Let us see. The veins in the plant with the fibrous roots are parallel to each other on the both the sides of the midrib. Like here we see on the banana leaf. The arrangement of veins on a leaf is called the leaf venation. And when the veins on the either side of the midrib are parallel to each other, we call it parallel venation. Like here in the case of banana leaf. In the plants with the tap root system, the veins form a net like design on the both sides of the midrib. This type of venation is called the reticulate venation. For example, the hibiscus leaf has the reticulate venation. So we can say the hibiscus has the tap root system. What are the functions of a leaf? Let us see. We all know that the main function of leaf is to make food. Hence, it is called the kitchen of the plant. The leaves are green because they have a green pigment called the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll traps the sunlight and the plant produces the food which is glucose using carbon dioxide, water and the trapped energy of the sunlight. This process of making the food which is glucose is called photosynthesis. You know the photosynthesis is the main source of oxygen on the earth. Besides making food, the leaves perform some other tasks too. The leaves are full of tiny openings which are called stomata. The stomata are used to exchange gases with the environment like absorbing the carbon dioxide and releasing the oxygen gas. The plants also release water vapor by the transpiration process through the stomata. The transpiration helps the plants to cool down. There is another advantage of transpiration. You know, when the leaves lose water during the transpiration, the roots absorb the water to make up for it and the minerals comes into the plants along with the water. This upward pull for the transportation of water and the minerals along with it is caused by the transpiration process. The transpiration also helps in the water cycle of the nature by increasing humidity in the nature which causes the rain later. Apart from these tasks, in some plants the leaves perform some special tasks. Let us see what they are. In certain plants such as cabbage, spinach, lettuce etc. 
the leaves store the food in certain plants like the pea grapes etc the leaf turns into thread like tendrils the plants coil the tendril which is the modified leaf around a support to climb on it the cactus plant grows in the desert the leaf of the cactus plant are reduced to spines so that the plant doesn't lose water during the transpiration the spines also protect the plant from grazing animals now the question is who makes the food well it's the green fleshy stem which makes the food in the case of cactus plant the needle like leaf modification is seen in the plants like the pines fir spruce etc the leaves or the needles of these trees are kept all the year long these leaves do not freeze in the ice cold winters and can manufacture food even in the winter without losing much water you know there are certain plants which eat insects and they are called insectivorous plants for example the venus fly trap pitcher plant etc here the leaves are modified to set the trap for insects in case of the venus fly trap the lamina of the leaf is divided into two parts which join at the midrib the midrib acts like a hinge so when the insect sits on the leaf the two parts of the lamina fold at the midrib and come together to trap the insect the pitcher plant is another insectivorous plant and the leaves in the case of pitcher plant are modified to form tube like structures with hair and this is used to trap insects so to sum up what we learned today the functions of leaves are to prepare the food to exchange gases through the stomata and to keep the plants cool by the transpiration process the leaves are also modified to perform special tasks to store food for example in the case of cabbage tendrils to climb up the support for example in case of peas the leaves are also modified into spines to reduce water loss in the case of cactus the needle like leaves in the case of pine do not freeze in the cold and lastly the modified leaves trap insects in the case of venus fly trap so that was all about the amazing leaves bye bye children